poke off, please meet you. How do you do? Bang. You want a sack of my jeans, man? Scott is my best friend. Scott can hold down sick like a fucking cantaloupe, man. I'm going to look at you and say, where are we going? And you're going to look at me and say, I'm taking you for a Glasgow Monchi box at Shahid's. Cool. Paul, where are we going? We're going to Shahid's. Why? <laughs> Paul, behave yourself. Paul, where are we going? We're going to Shahid's for Monchi box. Ka-ching! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> As one of those Londoners who's never ventured up to Scotland, I figured the only way to see it was to eat and drink my way around the country. Mm. Beautiful. Just like you, darling. Oh. My food odyssey would take me through a land of extremes. From catching lobster on the far edges of the Atlantic, oh, you look to hunting deer in the majestic wilderness of the Highlands. Didn't know what hit it. Oh my God. Via the deep fat fries of the tough concrete cities. It looks like a heart attack in a box. I made the decision to surrender my stomach to Scotland. Thanks. It's the middle of summer, but I'm hiding from the cold and rain in University Cafe, which is a Glaswegian institution when it comes to warm, beige comfort food. On this plate in front of me, is Scotland's national dish, haggis, meat and tatties. But there's more to Scotland than offal stuffed with offal. If you can look beyond the lazy stereotype of deep fried Mars bars, there's a whole other side to Scottish cuisine. This is a country that produces some of the best meat, fish and whiskey in the world. as many classic Scottish dishes as you can. Um, haggis. 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 Haggis is good. A haggis and mashed potatoes and mashed turnip. Uh, haggis eggs. Eggs? Yeah, haggis eggs. Scurly. Scurly. Granddad is just amazing at making scurly. What's scurly? Oatmeal and onions fried together. Mince and tatties. What's a tatty? A potato. Black pudding, white pudding. You've got a fish and chip shop, we'll fry a pie for you. It's tasty food. Square sliced sausage, that's another. Why, why, why make a sausage square? I don't know. We've got the best seafood in the world. Cod, herring, we have trout, salmon. Of course, you've got all your game as well. Rabbit, yeah. hare, venison. Pheasant, partridge, grouse. Deer. Deer. Steak pies. Steak pie is still number one seller. I just, I love, I love steak pies. No fancy sauces, don't faff around with it. It's just, everything up. You just love steak pie. Nice glass of beer, glass of wine. We dram afterwards, maybe. We dram before it, we dram with it. I like the steak pies with the sausages um, in it. What's a clutey dumpling? Clutey dumpling's a dumpling made, but way back you used to make it in your granny's knickers. What? <laughs> <laughs> My journey began in Glasgow, Scotland's largest city. Along with the capital, Edinburgh, Glasgow is one of the country's cultural hubs and has been witnessing a sharp rise in high-end restaurants in the past few years. So the plan was to check out a Michelin-starred restaurant while we're here in Glasgow. We've been told to ditch the white tablecloths and instead come and visit Danny McLaren, a.k.a. the Mad Chef. Danny runs the kitchen at Bar Block, a sweaty basement bar. He's been labelled as Glasgow's answer to Heston Blumenthal. But while he's no expert in molecular gastronomy, he's made a name for himself by incorporating two of Scotland's most notorious drinks into his dishes. High strength tonic wine Buckfast, and the only soft drink to beat Coca-Cola sales in Scotland, the ever popular fluorescent orange Iron Brew. Fucking love Bucky so much, man. Did you grow up drinking it? I did actually, that's why I'm fucking a maniac. What are we doing? What we doing, we're gonna make fucking Glasgow's undisputed best ice cream of all fucking time. And it's gonna consist of butt fast fucking ice cream, lots of fucking sugar, caffeine, and an ice cream maker. <laughs> so let's get the cooking. Now, this has been probably one of the best things I've ever created as far as Glasgow's concerned. It's an institution in Glasgow, butt fast. As you know, don't give your kids smarties because they're going to run about the fucking carpet mental, but we want that. This is how I roll. I just pour shit in. Fucking boom. Half a bottle of butt fast is usually best. Put it on the cooker. 
and I'll let it roll. Any ice cream, the more milk you put in, the more crystallised it's going to be. The more cream you put in, the more soft it's going to be. What's, what's your favourite type of ice cream? Heavy on the cream. Boom! One for myself. Yeah. And then one for the double cream and milk. This is just for colour. This doesn't do anything alcoholic to it. So you can't get pissed off this ice cream? Yeah, you can, but I'm not supposed to tell anybody that. A butt fast sugar syrup is going to take a little bit. But luckily for you, I made some Blue Peter style earlier. Pour half of what is in there into the ice cream I don't machine. know where half is. Half is this, I'll show you. Keep going, keep going, feed that baby. This is the part that makes the ice cream what it is. Can you pour all of that shit? All of that, sorry. Apologies for the swearing. Boom. Boom. That's just butt fast. What do you know about Iron Brew? Now, have you ever thought about Iron Brew in the context of pork? Honestly, this is timeless, because this is a part of my culture. This is, this is taking a city that you grew up in for years, taking some of its best loved produce and incorporating it into a dish. What even is Iron Brew, though? It's absolutely laden with calories, sugar, and all the bad things that you don't want in your life. So this is basically, I can't even tell you what's in there, right, but a wee secret one. Oh, what? Give me a clue. We've got tomato puree, apple cider vinegar, paprika, garlic powder, and also a bit of a fresh garlic. You just gave us your secret. No, you didn't. I've got some other shit in there as well. That in itself could rock. Yeah, I mean, pulled pork is one of my all-time favourite things, so I kind of don't want you to do this to it. Can you like, stab, stab some it. holes inside it? Think of your ex-boyfriend that kind of let you down and never really made himself good with you and just let it go. Die, 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 die. If that was my oh. ex-girlfriend, I think I'd have penetrated through the tub. So, watch the magic happen. The first time you did this, you were, were you like, I might just have wasted? To be honest, I don't really want to say in camera, but the first time I did this, yeah. I was very drunk. If you can do me the fine pleasure of putting that in the bottom oven, so we're talking about maybe three hours, that's going to be ready. But, I mean, let's be honest, Iron Brew is not like something not that usual. Scotland Scotland's going to be like proud of. It's not like they grew it, it's not like deer to or be salmon. Honest, yeah, I, will, I will probably educate you in a little bit. Every member of the Blue Collar Society that is in Glasgow from day to day would not manage the amount of work without Iron Brew. If you, were, if you had a sales tracker, some digital sales tracker for Scotland to measure the amount of iron brew sales from 9 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. If you watched it, at 9 o'clock in the morning the sales would be like, BOOM! That iron brew drives this country. Look at that. We've got the cheddar slowly melted, the pork, the iron brew. Sweet, a bit of depth, a bit of crunch, a bit of freshness. That is Glasgow and a gourmet sandwich. I love it when you talk dirty. <laughs> I told you. Mm. You're a fucking genius. <laughs> I think I might need to remember that. Yeah. Is it weird to say that it kind of, it kind of tastes fizzy? And I know that te that sounds horrible, but it's, it's one of oh. those things that instantly you don't know if you like it or you don't know if you love it. But the trick is, I bet you finish it all now. I love it. That Cheers. is so good. Cheers. Well done, <laughs> you. <laughs> Honestly, boys, you have no idea. <laughs> I need to make my apologies. It's been very hot inside the kitchen, and that's reason, hence it's melting. To Scotland. Cheers. Perfection is imperfection. How good is that? Oh my god. How good is that? Mm. <laughs> I fucking love butt fast. I fucking, I love you guys, man. I haven't even took any drugs yet, and I love you. I was quickly learning that people up here really do love Buckfast. I was on my way to meet a young group of Buckfast enthusiasts who are fans of the popular Bucky Facebook page. This 15% fortified wine is one of Scotland's most popular drinks. 
with over £40 million worth of the stuff flying off the shelves every year. So here it is. The name tonic wine does not imply health giving or medicinal properties. There's still so much controversy around the drink. It's said to have the same amount of caffeine in one serving as six cups of coffee and has been linked to almost 7,000 crimes in Scotland over the past few years. But the craziest fact of all is that the drink is produced by Benedictine monks in the southwest of England. We bought gifts. Oh, How are you? Oh, oh even cans and everything. Yeah. How are you doing, mate? Nice to meet you. Paul Goff, pleased to meet you. Paul, thanks for Would having you like us. To come in? Doyle, Jamie, Scott, Stephen, Jamie. What the hell is Buckfast? This, this is Buckfast. Oh, that's delightful. That is delightful. <laughs> Wait, that's what happened. No, but that, no. See, that, that photo gives Buckfast a bad name. My it's first instance in Buckfast was um, when I was 14 years old and I lost my virginity. Do you even remember it? Oh! oh. Did it even happen? <laughs> oh! Is he a virgin? <laughs> People say that it's, uh, Buckfast gets you in a sort of predicament where you just don't want to be, but. I like Buckfast. It's good, but in a sense, it's disgusting. It's, it's cheap and it's nasty, but in the same sense, it's good. You know, I looked at me, I'm fucked, man. Can you define for me what you love about it? Because it's cheap and it gets you fucked up quickly. <laughs> uh, we, need, we, we do need to crack the bottles. Yeah. And, and get, on, and get the, the ritual in. Three, two, one, boys. Wine time. Wine time. It's kind like of sweet. It. It's, it's a bit like port at the same time. And I took a sip about 30 seconds ago and I can it's almost like I can feel like it's so alcoholy. It's like vapour. Yeah. It's like really ethanol is just coming. But it's not the nicest taste in the world, but the, once you've had like two or three drinks of it, you don't really care what it tastes like yeah. anymore. Somebody also told me that Buckfast is associated with Ned culture. What the hell is a Ned? Non-educated delinquents. Yeah, Neds are based on a, a subculture of people that wear tracksuits and drink Buckfast. I'm not a Ned. I, I'm musical minded. I don't wear tracksuits. I wear skinny jeans and fucking trainers. I'm a musical minded person that loves music. Like the government wanted to stop people drinking Buckfast because of the youth violence associated with it. Nothing to do with the fact that the youth of Scotland are quite violent. I mean, it, it gets such a bad rep off the police, it gets such a bad rep off the government. See, the, the government, the government, the, the propagandist fucking shite. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> what a sh... <sighs> were you just sick? I wasn't even actually sick there yet, guys. Are you up? I wasn't even sick. Yeah, I was sick a little. What first happened was I um, was just sitting there taking a drink of wine. Then I kept it in my mouth for a little bit. Then I drank it a little bit. And then I was sick. Guys, every city where you go to, there's always like a late night food that you can go and get yeah. when you're drunk. Why are horrible things like deep fried half pizzas and munchie boxes, why are they popular? Why are they a thing? Are, are, are you realistically going to go out and drink all night then say, do you know what, I want a radish? Because you don't want a radish. When you've been out drinking all night, you want something that feels as absolutely fucking shit as you are. And then when you get it, it comes in this perfect box. Greasy box, yeah. When you get a greasy box, it comes in a box, which is that, by that. And it's filled with pakora, it's filled with chips, it's filled with, it's filled with everything that you really, really, really shouldn't have in your body. Charlotte, I would think you would really be good if you came out and got a munchie box with us, just to see what it's like to experience to get in a munchie box at this time of night. You twisted my arm. Come on then, let's go. <laughs> you twisted my man and man. I want munchie boxes. Surprise! Can you have a selfie? Come on, let's camera selfie. <laughs> But not as we know them. You'll get your onion rings, but they'll be fried in so much fat that. I'm not very good at this. It's so hot, it's burning my face off. It 
looks like a heart attack in a box. <laughs> but a, a delicious one. What a way to die. This is a munchie box. Wow. Dinner is served. Dinner is served. Look at that shit and tell me you don't want to eat that. Cost. So all of this for under a tenner. It's amazing. I feel like I'm feeding the 5,000 or whatever. Scott, in a nutshell, really, really, really bad bottles of wine and a big, massive pizza box full of carbohydrates. Could you eat this if you were sober? Oh, yes. Oh. Wow. It's like burning my eyes. <laughs> oh. I'm getting a top note of Stilton. I lost the boat once, Cap capsized by an unusual wave. Every second Tuesday is steampunk. I didn't get the memo. 